Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, the Installation Safety Office announces the motorcycle safety training schedule for this year. Mead Senior High performs Godspell, and it's time to spring forward. These stories and more, but first, March is Military Women's History Month, and today we bring you an interview with a history maker right here in Maryland, Brigadier General Linda Singh, the first African American and first female to command the Maryland Army National Guard. In this segment, provided by the 29th Mobile Public Affairs Detachment, she talks about all the changes she's seen since her time as an enlisted soldier. Things have changed significantly. If I just look at the organization overall, we're starting to see more uh, diverse leaders at the top, which I think is extremely important. And, and that's if you look across all services, that's if you, if you even look across civilian organizations and at the numbers of CEOs that we're seeing. And I mean, we're in a, a time where we, f we have our first African-American president. So I have seen things change significantly, but I have also been very blessed in that I did not have any, any racial issues kind of coming through all of my career. Uh, I would have to say that it's been more about me being a female versus you know being a male, but um, I think that that's also changing. I started out with the Guard, I left and went into the Reserves and then came back to the Guard. Um, and so you always come home, so I, I feel like you know, the Guard is my home. But when I think about the units, the composition of the organization has changed significantly. And um, that would be the, the big thing. And I think as we look at it over time, there's still some rock steady organizations that we have in terms of capabilities. But um, there's been a huge shift in, in the capabilities that we have from when I originally started and the types of equipment that we had then versus you know, what we have now. The proudest moment in my military career, God, there's so many. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd have to say definitely being the RB commander. That to me is my proudest moment. And because one, you know, I love staff, I, I love working on the staff, but being able to, at this level to get back to being an army, you know, a commander. So, you know, being the army commander for the National Guard, it's, it's, it's truly, I think, very refreshing. And it's allowing me for, you know, another time to be able to put my fingerprint on an organization that truly I've kind of grown up in. If I, if I really think about it, I've kind of grown up in the Maryland Army National Guard and it's allowing me to be able to put my fingerprint on something and hopefully to leave a legacy and to give people some type of hope as in, you know what, yes, we're going through some tough times, but we're going to get through this. In other news, the Garrison Safety Office has announced the motorcycle safety training schedule for this year. Training is mandatory for military members wanting to operate a motorcycle on the installation. The training is provided at no cost to tenant military personnel, and registration is first come, first serve. Army Reserve and National Guard members must be on orders to take the training. The basic rider course is two days and will be offered March 10th and 11th, 18th and 19th, April 8th and 9th, and April 15th and 16th, May 20th and 21st, June 10th and 11th, July 15th and 16th, August 12th and 13th, September 16th and 17th, and October 8th and 9th. The one-day experienced rider course will be offered in March on the 12th and the 20th, in April on the 7th and 17th, May 22nd, June 12th, July 17th, August 14th, September 8th, and October 6th. The Military Sport Bike Rider Course also one day is being offered on March 17th, April 14th, May 19th, June 9th, July 14th, August 11th, September 15th, and October 7th. For more information, you can go to the safety page on the Fort Meade website at www.ftme.army.mil slash pages slash safety. If you're catching Mead Week before Sunday, March 8th, then you still have a chance to see the Mead High School production of Godspell. The performances are Friday and Saturday night at 7 p.m. at the Mead High Auditorium. Tickets are discounted with a canned food donation. And finally this week, just a quick reminder that you're about to lose an hour of sleep on Saturday night or Sunday morning. Don't forget to set your clocks ahead by one hour before going to sleep on Saturday. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.